This program is brought to you by Statesboro Natural Gas. According to Statesboro News, October 4, 1904, in 1804, just 100 years ago, Statesboro was made the county seat of Bullock County. Only a few people dwelt in the county then, and they were Harley hunters who lived along the river and fathered their living from the forest and stream. The old Pimply Hills, from which we now gather more than half a million worth of Sea Island cotton yearly, were regarded by them as worthless. They had no plows to break the hard clay soil, and farming was a poor business. They had no railroads, no mills, no telegraph and telephone. Churches and schools were far apart and the log cabin was their mansion. According to the Bullock Times, July 16, 1896, last Friday at the home of Dr. and Mrs. Quattlebaum, a little Democrat was born. According to the Statesboro News, March 15, 1901, the Western Union Telegraph Company has poles placed along the line from Burton to Dover and a large section of the interior will soon be in touch with the world. According to the Statesboro News, January 30, 1906, Mayor R. Lee Moore has had his hands full for the past two or three days, trying a lot of plain drunks. Not so particularly disorderly, but plain drunk. He is putting on the tariff to the tune of about $15 each. The boys have lots of fun, but it is rather costly in the windup. According to the Statesboro News, April 13, 1909, the street committee is taking down all the hitching posts in town. And now the question arises, what are the country people going to do about a place to hitch their teams? Statesboro needs a hitching park with trees in it to shade the stock from the heat of the sun or a large shelter to protect them from cold and rain. According to the Bullock Times, April 14, 1909, on April 8th, a son was born to Mr. and Mrs. A.C. Turner, parents of the editor of the Bullock County Times. The young man is their 20th child and 12th son. According to the Bullock Times, March 14, 1918, the material for paving the streets of Statesboro will begin to arrive this week and the work will actually begin next week. I was born right here in Statesboro, Georgia. Bullock County is a unique county in that, I don't know, it has this, this thing about it that family, family is the, it, we have deep roots. And now today, people move around, they don't have that deep roots of the ancestors. They lived in log cabins in the beginning settlements here in Bullock County. They lived up on the river, and the beginning here, the beginning wasn't all that long ago. Moved in a house with no lights and no water. My husband inherited a farm when he was eight, 18 years old. I'll never forget we went to Sack and Grove School up here. Around for last year, we up between Pulaski and Meadow. I remember having a big school bus. I'll never forget. We loaded up in that two seated bag. There was about four of us kids that loaded us up from off the bed, got on the front seat. She had, all, had the baby sitting in her lap, and the rest of us got in the back seat. Now, we, we talked about a good time, we talked about something. Granddaddy had a dairy farm, and grandmother sold. She first started with, uh, she had a, she had, she had a incubator that she had sold baby chickens. And then after then she went into the egg business. And they lived three miles from Statesboro. And uh, I used to, went out there every weekend. I was the only grandchild for 13 years. And I was kind of spoiled a little bit. I got anything I wanted from my granddaddy and grandmother. The women of Bullock County were always working. They may not have been working in the city in the days the horse and buggy was more common than the car, but their jobs might have been easier had they been employed outside of the family business. My mother was always at home preparing food and, and doing laundry and uh, all of those things that need to be done for a large family. A woman's place back in those days, well, they was home cooking, having children, uh, being married, raising a family, taking care of all of those duties. When I was growing up, and, and even when I was having my children earlier, uh, uh, women didn't leave their children with anybody. We had great mothers. My, my mother always carried us wherever she went, she took us with her, you know. 
I never heard tell of babysitters or anything like that. We didn't leave our children with anybody. The women, they worked at home, but they also, so many of them that were well, on the farm, they worked on, in the fields as well. I was still um, in my uh, mid to late teens. I was still working in the, in the, on the farm. Anything to stay out of the field, I didn't mind. You know, uh, whatever would, would help me to stay out of the cotton field, I didn't mind doing it, you know, so. They really had uh, a tough road to hoe. It was tough, for sure. I was just a girl about eight or nine years old, and God spoke to me and said, I want you to, uh, I want you to take care of people. I want, in other words, he wanted me to be a caretaker. When I went to work in 1943 at the tobacco market, the bulk of people in Statesboro did not have a telephone because they could hardly pay $3 a month for a telephone in your home. So you would go to the little store if you wanted to call someone or to someone that had a telephone uh, to make your call. We used to have to milk cows and bring the cows up and take the... We had two collie dogs would help us and, and I'd worked all my life. So they, um, it was, everybody had to work. Didn't have any money, but it didn't bother me. I never had had any. But everybody else mostly in those days, they were poor too. Sometimes I would think about not having anything to eat, but I had a friend next to me, and when I didn't have anything to eat, she did. And we, it's been, you can't, you couldn't think about it. Uh, the things we've had to do. She used to uh, boil the clothes in the black pot, you know, they put a fire under that, and then we used to get out and beat the clothes. I don't know what that was for. <laughs> but I guess it was shaking up the dirt. <laughs> I have never, I've never found out why we had to beat those clothes. <laughs> While women had very little choices in life, really, no one had much of a choice when it came to surviving. A job had to be done. When I finished, high school here, they were uh, the dime store or a little waitress work. Maybe a clerk in a, in a dress shop. You had to wait if somebody died or left town out of the bank or the courthouse. There was no businesses, you know, nothing. And that was the reality here in Bullitt County and many other communities across the country. Families were still living off the land well into the 1900s and women, like so many others, were doing what they had to do. Well, they were just not jobs. Before World War II, before the car took over for the train, and before the boll weevil changed the area cash crop from cotton to tobacco, a way of living was about to end. Main streets in Bullitt County were about to have to change. Women were about to have a few choices. A lot of women, even from here, drove to Savannah to work in the shipyards. But their heritage of faith would remain. I always thought farmers had to have a lot of faith because they had to depend on the Lord bringing the rain to rain the crops and get the right amount of sunshine. It was the time between the wars and it was the primer for what was soon to come for women and out of portal came the pioneer. The first attending physician of Eggleston Children's Hospital and the discoverer of the whooping cough vaccine. Her dad being the uh, mayor, first mayor of portal and he's actually buried in our cemetery here. And his home, her home, uh, somebody bought it and moved it and redone it. I, I was her guinea pig with the whooping cough serum. She practiced until she was like 100. Yeah. My brother uh, had the whooping cough and uh, Leela called mother and she said, bring Joanne. She says, she, uh, she, she, uh, I was a baby. And she said that, uh, she needed to try to use the serum because she wanted to prevent me from having the coupon cough and she knew it would work. And while women like Dr. Denmark who left the area were making strides outside of Bullitt County, the women who remained in the area made sure to start making their presences known outside the home, right here at home. I, I made good money for a woman in those days when I drove back into that 15 half, I traded cars almost every year. <laughs>